But this is the big talking point. The big talking point for me and for a lot of people is Son. And if you've got Kane and, and the community is 50-50 split between us, do we need to get Son in? How essential is he for those last two games if you've already got Kane, for example, and Kulisevsky, like I've got. So we've got the data on the screen here. Um, over the season, uh, you can see Kane is winning over the majority of, I say winning, winning in terms of having better underlying stats. He's got a better minutes per shot, better minutes per shot in the box, better minutes per chance. Um, he's got a better minutes per expected goal involvement non penalty, which is what we care about, although there's not too much in it between them. Um, but 13 goals compared to 19 uh, and 10 goals compared to nine. Uh, and if you look at some of these stats, it's the accuracy, Son's accuracy of the season, 53.4. Look at Son's accuracy. That's crazy, isn't it? Oh, we're we're going to get to the last six in a oh, second because no, it's no, even no. more ridiculous. I mean, Son's mm. conversion over the season is 26% and Kane's is 12. Very so that, high. That tells yeah. a bit of a story. Kulisevsky is also on the list. I mean, his conversion is 14%, which is about in line with, with, with Kane. Um, he's got three goals and nine assists, which for a six million midfielder coming in, you could argue Excellent. he's been one of the signings of the of the season, really, in terms of FPL and, and for Spurs. But look at this over the last six. Over the last six, Son just blitzes um, Kane, you know, eight goals compared to one. OK, he's only had two assists and Kane's had seven. But look at this accuracy, 66% compared to Kane's 21%. And this so is the key one. So two-thirds of his shot are hitting the target. Absolutely crazy. And then this is the big one, conversion, 53% compared to 5% for Kane. Mm. And that's yeah. the difference, right? So I look at those stats and I think, and, and, and you look at some of the other metrics that last six, I mean, Kane is having, his, his minutes per shot is better, 28.4 compared to 34. He's, he's shooting more regularly, but he's not hitting mm. the target. He's not converting, but he's an elite finisher. He That's one of his main traits. Surely yeah, it's going to well, turn guess, for him. I guess the quality of chance is the factor as well. If you look at minutes per XGI and on penalty, Son beats him 128.7 to 181.2. It's quite a gap. That's mm. quite a big gap. right? So what that's telling us is that Kane's quality of chance is far lower than that that Son has been getting. So therefore that's going to mean there's an adjustment in accuracy and conversion right? as a result. So at the moment, Kane isn't getting into positions where he's getting shots that are high enough quality to score. Or, you can see from that big chance, minutes for big chance, 86 for Son, yeah. 135 yeah. for Kane. Yeah, big uh, a gap there. Also, we know Son always outperforms his XG anyway. We expect we expect a high accuracy in conversion from Son, but not this high. This is this is gone to another level now. Um, arguably, controversially, is Son a more prolific? and stronger heavy hitter than Salah for the rest of the season. I would say he is. Wow. I would say he is at the moment. Mm. I mean, you've got to say that. He's, I think, what's he got, like 80-odd points to Salah's 40-odd over the last five or six game weeks? I mean, he's done, you, look at the, you look at the points tallies over the last five or six game weeks, I think Son is miles out in front by 30 or 40 points. So the gap is massive from the rest of the field, like De Bruyne, Salah, uh, the aforementioned Kane and so on. I, um, I'm glad I've got him. W what would I do to get him? Um, well, I guess the problem is the, the Burnley and Norwich fi uh, fixtures, right? Because the double's not that attractive, Liverpool-Arsenal. You could probably get through that without him. But you are going to be worried going into the Burnley and Norwich games, aren't you, without him, I think. Well, my, my concern is that I've got Kane and Kulisewski in place. So I've got mm. two of these three great assets going forward. Tripling up on a team has never sat particularly right mm with me especially a team like Spurs because we have seen them in games where we expected them to score in it Brighton for example them failing to live and that's three of your assets Burnley are decent at the moment they, they're, they're, they're playing well yeah. I, I, I don't think that's going to be I don't think that's going to be a four or five it wouldn't massively surprise me if it was but my kind of instinct is that it's not but the Norwich game is, is it, a huge concern going into that game it, without Son is yeah yeah could be anything, couldn't it? I mean, if, if Spurs have got to win the game as well, and, and, and you know, goal difference could be a fact. I've not looked at the table recently, but, you know, they're, they've got plenty to play for still, Spurs. Norwich haven't got anything to play for. Um, so who have Liverpool got in 38? They're at home to Wolves, I want to say. Let's have a look. Is it Wolves? Um, it's a decent fixture. They've all got very decent fixtures mm. to end on. Is it Man City have got Wolves or is it Liverpool? No, City have got a Villa. So it is Wolves, I believe. Let's have a look. Uh, yes, Wolves. I was absolutely correct. Um, but one thing I would say, you mentioned that tripling up on a team isn't normally wise. I agree to some extent. 
But do you not think that Son and Kane, because they're so in linked, so intrinsically linked, well, as true. in one rarely scores when the mm. other doesn't get an assist, that you should forget that? Because I look, I looked at it as well, but I thought, well, how often does Kane score and it's got nothing to do with Son or Kulusevski? How often does Son score and it's got nothing to do with Son or Kulusevski? Hardly any times, right? So I know when Spurs score, I'm getting something. I would have thought. I mean, because I've got those three, so. It's not like owning three City players when there could be like one to ten goal scorers or one to ten people mm. providing the assist. This is this these three players are the be all and end all of Spurs' attacking returns, and Son and Kane are the best partnership we've ever seen in the Premier League, right? That's fact. In terms of assisting each other and, and scoring from those assists. So I think the, you forget that. The, the thing is though, unless you've got unless you've had a wild card recently, I don't think you're gonna be in a position to have Kane, Son and Salah. The, no. three of, the three of them. So no. you have, you have to sacrifice. Kane, you? you have to sacrifice yeah. one of them. So yeah, that's the question. Is I'm looking at my team, and it's do I sell Kane and get Son? Um, yeah. And you know, and, and Richarlison and Watkins, I think, well, are at least giving us so much, which we're going to talk about in a bit. They at least give us that option to go to. That's it. Back to back doubles. It. Yeah. The reason why I went Kane some time ago, someone advised me to do it, but also because the structure of my team, there wasn't another forward I could go to. Mm. And I almost wanted to get that one forward picked so I could play 4-5-1 effectively and not have to worry about the other two forwards. And I could possibly then go cheap and go Gellhart or Greenwood, which which General did. Um, I, I was looking at that as a possibility. So I went and came thinking well, I could move to that kind of model and get the money out of the other two strikers and go 4-5-1. I didn't do that in the end. But I, it was because of the lack of options up front. But now when you look at it, there are actually players like replacing Kane with Richarlison if it meant you could get Son actually looks all right looks very good and we'll see how cost the data we're going to look at later there are good reasons to justify that move so i think the the, the landscape has changed now because of the emergence of a charleston as a viable option watkins i'm less enamored by but he has got fixtures right so assuming charles isn't banned different. <laughs> which we don't think he's going to be I, I, I don't see it no, no i don't see it no but um yeah i think i think i if i was looking at it now i would probably move Kane to Richarlison and, and gets on the yeah. final two, yeah.